afternoon guys it's Dana here with prestige dog grooming school and the everyday pet grimmer um i promised ina copit i hope i said your name right ina copit a top knot video so i have had some health issues with my own personal poodle here so i've decided to take him down and May as well have fun with it at the same time. So we've done a kind of retro poodle trim. I don't even know what you want to call this. It's totally vintage, but I'm going to do his top knot now so that you can kind of see how I like to set in that top knot and get that perfect look. So, you know, I hope you can catch the replay, but uh, let's get started, guys. So I'll kind of show you what I've been doing here. I'll, I'll put before and after pictures after too, but he was a disaster. Anyways. This is my totally old school retro poodle going on here. So anyways, he needs to grow his tail in because he was in a German trim before this. So we've retroed him. He's very vintage poodle going on here. But I thought I may as well have fun if I'm gonna clip him down. So anyways, let's get started on this top knot. Since I'm a sitting groomer, I like to do my dogs laying down for their top knots. So I'm going to ask him to lay down here. Come on, bud. Down. Here we go. And then I'm going to adjust the camera there. Okay. So for top knots, I've already done his face. I've clipped it for him. He's my dog, so I know what he can handle with his white skin. I've done a 15 blade. Stop. Lay down. Okay. So I've done a 15 blade straight from the corner of the eye back to the ear. And I like to go to the top of the ear. Stay. Okay. So once I've done that, and I've got my top knot all done out like that, I like to pretend the top knot is honestly just a giant doodle foot. I know that sounds cliche, but it's totally true. You're only beveling this poodle foot, is the or doodle foot. So I like to pretend it's just a giant foot. So. I'm going to comb everything forward and up. And then the most important layer is always the inside layer. Just like any bevel on a foot, the inside layer is the most important. So I'm going to comb that down. I'm going to come in with my straight chair at an angle, not straight up and down, at an angle. Do you mind holding that ear, hun? And I'm just going to trim really close, straight line to the back and really close, right to the skin. And notice my shears are slightly angled out. So I want it to be very close to the skin and angling out. So you can guys see that? So make that layer tight to the skin and then start scissoring straight out, but not straight up and down. You need to be slightly angled out. So that's my first cut. Now, whatever you do to one side, repeat on the other. So coming down, sorry guys, it's an awkward angle for me. So coming at an angle and super tight to the skin. So that first layer needs to be very, very tight. And then just follow through with that cut all the way. So follow through with that cut all the way out. Notice how it's just at an angle there, not straight up and down, angled out. I'm just following through all the way up my top knot. Once I've got that cut in, my next step is I flip the ears over. A lot of groomers I see are connecting the top knot into the ears. You want to separate the top knot from the ears. So I'm going to comb it out and I'm going to take my straights, set them up at that slight angle, come right in and separate the ear from the top knot. And I'm just following right through to the back. And now I'm just gonna lightly dust off to blend that in. But you do want a clear separation between ear and top knot. What I do to one side, I'm going to repeat on the other. So again, I'm gonna follow through, I'll come this way guys so you can see. Follow through this line connected with that one and slightly angled out. If you angle up and down, you're going to end up with a slightly cone-shaped mohawk going on. So you have to angle out if you're going to get the right shape. Making sure that cut right next to the edge is very, very tight. 
And then again, I'm gonna just dust off the top of that ear just so it blends in. Okay. And then my next step is to comb everything forward. And now my next step is always to make that line. So I'm connecting right to the line I did on the side by the eye. And I'm coming right around again with my shears angled under, not straight up and down. So at a 45 degree angle. And I'm just going right around. Again, I'm focusing on just the layer directly next to the skin. So I'm coming all the way around and connecting that right to this side. Repeat, comb out and repeat. Coming around. Now my next step is to just start bringing that up. So I'm opening my shears wider and I'm following that same line all the way around. Again, I'm angled slightly under. If you angle straight up and down instead of angled out, you're going to end up sloping the top of the head. And we want a slight overhang. So coming right around. So you can see our top knot starting to come together. Comb forward, repeat. Remember that you need to use a comb and constantly repeat. So I'm just keep coming up and I'm just rounding everything in. I'm slowly moving my way up. So once I've got those steps done, see how nice and tight it is along the eyes? Then I'm gonna fluff up the top and I'm gonna slightly just round off the edges here. I like to just round that off. Slightly round off this side. And I'm just letting my thinning shears do the work for me here, guys. Oh, sorry, my curved shears. Just letting the curve in my shears do the work. So now what we're left with is a rounded front and sort of a mohawk. You guys see that? So this is when I like to come set in the back. With this guy, I'm doing a bit of a V-neck in the back here. So I'm gonna hold my ear forward and in him, I'm gonna right cut that V and then just round it in. If you were doing a straight back, I would do just straight up and down into the neck. On him, I'm not doing that because we're doing some kind of strange retropoodle cut here. And now I'm gonna do what I do to one side, do to the other. So coming straight down at an angle for this cut. And then I'm just rounding that in at the back of the ear here. I'm gonna bend his head forward and down so you guys can see the top there. I'm gonna take my curve shears and I'm gonna finish off sort of like a little mohawk at the back here. Again, there's no right or wrong in grooming, and especially in poodles, so I don't know. I've never done this cut before, but I thought why not try something fun. So I've got a V-neck on the back of my dogs. But see, after you've set in the back, do you guys see what's left? It like screams out to you what shape it should be. So I like to come almost straight and letting my curves do the work for me. Because once you've set in everything the way I just showed you, it will scream out what needs to be trimmed on the top. Just a little shake and just keep dusting that top off. Remember a little bit at a time. You can always take more off. See, when you pull it up, then you're gonna be able to see what's not quite working. So you can come in and take that off. I can come in again, see if everything's working the way I want. If it's not, I'm just gonna dust it off again. And see on a profile view how nice that top knot is. You guys see that? So honestly, a lot of grooming is step by step. If you know the step by steps to do, it's actually really easy. It's like paint by colors, I call it. And that is exactly how I've designed every single course in Prestige Dog Grooming School is all going to be taught 
step by step, each step building on the next so that you guys can achieve the exact same results. See? And that is London, the poodle. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll post uh, before and afters. Bye. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Dana Alexander with Prestige Dog Grooming School. Join us on Facebook in the Everyday Pet Grimmer.